Well, I think you can say the Seminoles got their mojo back. Morgan Jones returns to the lineup and FSU crushes Wake Forest in Tallahassee. The Seminoles hadn't played a game in a while. They hadn't won a game in over a month, but they get a big time win. And coming up on ACC Network, we're just getting started. The number five team in the country on the road at Miami. Kelsey Marshall, the South Florida native, trying to win one on her home turf. Elisa Kinane, though, fresh off a double-double in that huge win over North Carolina. Her third double-double of the season. Her 28th double-double of her career, trying to maintain that momentum as they visit the Hurricanes. Back here with the coach, Muffet McGraw, Drew Carter here on ACC Network. And plenty more games happening in the ACC today. There were a couple postponed. Louisville and Miami, NC State and Notre Dame due to protocols within the Cardinals program and the Irish program. So the Wolfpack and Hurricanes decide, hey, let's just play each other. Down in South Florida, NC State at Miami is the next one here on ACC Network. You can also see Duke at Syracuse on ACC Network Extra. The number five team in the nation, the Wolfpack and Diamond Johnson trying to win on the road against Miami. That's our next game here on ACC Network. So coach, what is it like when you don't know your opponent until two days before <laughs> the game happens? What do you think? Well, you know, it's really difficult. Now, a team like NC State, they're going to come out and they're going to do their, their normal game. They're going to play their man-to-man. -man. They're going to go through Kunane. They've got weapons on the, on the perimeter. They can do a lot of different things and adjust kind of mid-game. A team like Miami, they're going to really try to game plan. They've got to try to double-team Kunane. We've got to work on what are we going to do? We're going to go zone. We're going to go man. How are we going to shut them down? What can we do differently to slow them down and take them out of the rhythm? And that's going to take a few practices to figure that out, especially when you haven't had a game in so long just getting the rust off in the Wake Forest game last time you know this is only their second game out in the last 25 days so if they do double team Canadian where do you think NC State goes for the offense well they're a really good three-point shooting team so if they, if they can get out and go some inside out throw it into Canadian draw the double team and now somebody's going to be open on the perimeter and they have so many options Raina Perez shooting the ball really well Diamond Johnson, a player that can score. You got Jada Boyd, Takia Brown Turner. I mean, they have so many weapons. It's really difficult when you're looking at scouting this team to figure out who are we going to stop. Pick your poison. You can't stop everybody. So, Coach, I know that the, you know, the COVID protocols are obviously something new in college basketball, but did you ever have a situation where you didn't know your opponent until a couple days beforehand, maybe in a tournament setting or something? Yeah, that's the only time. You know, you go into the ACC tournament, but you've got it all mapped out. You're looking at these, these are the two possibilities. And this, this person's going to scout this team. This person's going to scout that team. The problem now is you may have one person who has the scout for NC State, but she also had all these other scouts, hasn't really had a chance to get back to that NC State game. So these assistant coaches are working 24-7. They've got to work ahead. They've got to be prepared for absolutely every game in the conference because you really just don't know. It's like spin the wheel. Where's it going to land? Oh, that's who we're playing tomorrow. So let me make sure I've got my scouting report done. Yeah, it is chaos in the ACC schedule right now, but with about three minutes or just two minutes now until tip-off, we think we have a pretty good idea that NC State is playing Miami on the road in South Florida. We talked about where the Wolfpack could go if Elisa Kinane is double team. Maybe Reina Perez could be an option for NC State. You know, this Wolfpack team is very well-rounded, Coach. It's not just the preseason ACC player of the year, Elisa Kinane. You think Perez is maybe the player that's impressed you the most outside of Kinane or is someone else for NC State? Well, I have to say, she's, she's my favorite point guard in the conference, along with Olivia Miles. But Raina Perez has the experience. She's got this team winning. She's shooting the ball well from the three-point line. She's working well with Diamond Johnson when she comes off the bench. She's getting the ball to the right people. She's got a great assist-to-turnover ratio. You can't press this team. She has the experience to make them go. All right, well, it's NC State fresh off that dominant win over North Carolina, the Tar Heels' first loss of the season. Wolfpack beat them badly, trying to maintain that momentum in Miami and for tip off let's send you down to Coral Gables with Pam Ward and Stephanie White guys take it away welcome to ACC Network Basketball presented by Food Lion coming to you this afternoon from Coral Gables Florida number five NC State still unbeaten in the league in town to take on Miami yes this is the matchup 
NC State originally was scheduled to be at Notre Dame. Miami was going to play Louisville, but the Cardinals and the Fighting Irish, we found out on Friday, are both in COVID protocols. So the switch up has given us this matchup with their two scheduled opponents now in protocol. That's just the way things are going right now. Pam Ward along with Stephanie White, the uh, national champion at Purdue. And Steph, this has uh, got to be very difficult for these teams. They really only had one full practice to prepare for their opponent. Yeah, it's tough, especially when you're two teams who really rely on scout defense. And it, it is definitely a challenge to pivot. Um, but sometimes it can simplify things for players when you don't have as much time. But particularly challenging, I think, for Miami when you're talking about the offensive conundrum of NC State. And the biggest conundrum probably is how do you stop Elisa Kunain, who was absolutely spectacular in the big win against North Carolina? Pam, she was an All-American. She played like the All-American that she is. She was dominant. She was assertive. She wanted the basketball. She established herself inside early, was very efficient and aggressive. And then she showed us her range, has the ability to shoot the three, hit a career high, three threes in that matchup against Carolina. And remember, Carolina had been unbeaten before that game. They only scored 45 points. Uh, Katie Meyer, boy, her team, she talked about a challenge for a head coach. Their, their game on Thursday against Wake, first time in 25 days they played because of various COVID protocols. It really is a challenge. You know, you never know how many players we can have in practice, and then we finally get everyone back. We're preparing for a game, and it's disappointing that it doesn't happen. The challenge is how you keep everybody engaged. How do you keep everybody's morale up? And then, as we saw in the game against Wake Forest, came out very rusty on the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, in fact, uh, they lost that game after being down by 19, were able to tie it, but uh, Miami fell in that game. 47-46, going to need a lot more offense if they want to stay with NC State this afternoon. State coming out as you look at their starting five. Reina Perez, the point guard, and they try to go to Kinane right off the bat. Well, right away, Miami is going to do what Miami does, and that's get in your face, be active and aggressive on the defensive end of the floor, and that's a tough shot by Crutchfield. And Ty Crutchfield, who is known as their defensive stopper, instead gets the first bucket. Miami starting five. Lola Pendande has been really good, a 6'4 junior from Spain, transferred from Utah, going to get some size against Kunane. And the bank shot goes in by Marshall. And a good sign for Miami, aggressive to the rim early, get a shot to fall. It's so such a confidence builder when you can see the ball go through the bottom of the net. That was Kelsey Marshall with a two. Her next three will break a tie with Raquana Williams for the most threes in the history of Miami basketball. Crutchfield, two now. Pam, we saw Crutchfield explode for 17 points on four four threes against Florida early in the year and then kind of settled down, and there's that three. So Kelsey Marshall has done it the most threes in the history of the Hurricanes, number 273, breaking a tie with Laquana Williams, who has gone on to have a really solid, good career in the WNBA. And that's got to be a sort of a weight off of her shoulder as you see the, the list now. She is number one. Marshall coming into this game in the last couple had really struggled from distance. Yeah, she had, and, and you can't help but feel that pressure when you're about to break a record and, and it's, it's weighing on your mind, weighing on your shoulders. You really just want to get it over with, and she had struggled up until that point, but coming out hot today. Yeah, getting that three, she had missed 13 of her last 15 threes in the last couple of games before today, and Miami has taken the early lead. Outside shot, a little bit short. Rebounding going to be absolutely crucial. We saw Arivets do a good job of getting to it, but then she threw it away, and that induced a foul on the Canes. Arivets called for the foul. She is a senior from Croatia, came last year. Kind of worked her way into Katie Meyer's system and is a starter this season. And you know, Pam, we're going to see a lot of different looks from Miami. This is already the third look that we've seen, the extended 2-3, really trying to keep NC State off balance and force turnovers so that they can do this. Yes, and this is exactly what Wes Moore was concerned about, the head coach for NC State. When we talked to him yesterday, he says they're, they're well coached, and he said 
just stop their transition. He said he didn't know what is hotter, the weather down there or the aggressiveness <laughs> of Miami. And there you see Coach Moore's face kind of tells it all after a spectacular, especially defensive performance against Carolina on Thursday. Yeah, no question. When you have to prepare yourself, even though, you know, NC State is a very good offensive team. They are very efficient on the offensive end of the floor. But what Miami does is it, they really challenge you in the different ways that they come at you with pressure, using your pressure releases, getting open is a challenge, handling the ball against their length and athleticism and speed is a challenge. Miami up by three. Jalea Williams, who's a terrific freshman from Pompano Beach, got the two free throws. Crutchfield coming out firing, missed everything. Elisa Cunayan could not hang on to it. And uh, here we are, almost two and a half minutes into this game, and Cunayan has not taken a shot yet for NC State. The pressure on the perimeter that Miami is putting on NC State is making it very difficult to get entry passes into Cunayan. That's the secret, right? You don't want her to get the ball, because once she gets it in a certain position, a lot of time it's over. It's a little bit too low. Pendande could not come up with it. Cunayan got the quick double, and that left Kayla Jones free on the perimeter. That's what makes this NC State team so dangerous. There's just so many weapons out there. Area that's left open. Oh, boy, a great opportunity underneath, and the ball stays with Miami, but Williams missed the shot after the air ball slash pass to her. Miami has been in so many close games this year and, and, and lost some of those close games because of the inability to finish inside and to finish down low. Being efficient in the paint is key for Miami moving forward. And we just saw exhibit A of not being able to bury it. Shot clock winding down. That's a wild shot. Oh boy, another opportunity but an empty possession for Miami. Here's Cunane's first really good opportunity. Nice job. I think that was, yeah, that was uh, Pendande who got a hand on it. Yeah, and a really good job by Lisa Cunane of getting two feet in the paint. But we're going to see Miami all day long digging in, sometimes digging quickly, sometimes digging on the bounce, just trying to keep Cunane off balance so that she doesn't know whether the double's coming or not. That's one thing Katie Meyer said, if you put a little bit of pressure on her, it's going to make a difference if she feels the pressure physically or at least knows you're around. And any post player would tell you, when you know the double is coming, you know what to do with it. You know where it's going, how to get rid of it. When you don't know, you hesitate to make a quick move if you can't do that. You hesitate because the double may or may not be coming. And that's the, that's the goal for Miami inside, to make Kunane think. Really good defense. The activity level, length, athleticism, getting deflections, getting blocks. And Jolby Tobby coming in as an early sub. Katie Meyer said that she had done a good job previously against Kunane when Jolby Tobby started her career at Syracuse. So nice to have her in the lineup to try to neutralize Elisa. And they do it again, trying to get it into Kunane. And Miami's hands all over it, and it's their basketball. Just being disruptive. I mean, this is the identity of, of the Miami Hurricanes under Katie Meyer being disruptive, using that length and athleticism, getting a hand on the ball. You know, NC State's a team who really likes to flow in offense, and if you can get a hand on the ball, get a deflection, it disrupts that flow and rhythm. Katie Meyer's team has held five opponents to under 50 points this season. They've won four of those five games, but another tough one against the fifth-ranked team in the country, Ariovitz, tough go of it. Hobby in, number 41 in black, Emil Hobby, very valuable player off the bench who spells Cunane, who is out now. Did you see that defensive pressure by Williams not allowing Reyna Perez to get the ball? And another good play by Jolby Tomby. So far, so good for this Miami defense, holding stage at just four points so far. Getting inside, nice finish. Miami on a 7-0 run after Williams' score. And Katie Meyer talked to us about 
Jalea Williams and just the overall speed, athleticism, toughness, and competitiveness of, of this young freshman. We're seeing it on display. Hobby with a nice turnaround to get on the board. Only averages about six per game coming off the bench. Williams took a step. Ball goes over to NC State, but Miami out of the gate nicely, up three as we take our first time out. ACC Network Basketball is presented by Food Lion, official grocer of the ACC. 49 years ago today, the University of Miami women's basketball team played its first game on the right, number 20. That's Wynn Weigel, part of that ball club. They lost to Miami Dave North 37-21, the 50th season of Miami women's basketball. And that was 49 49 years ago today, right? You know, not soon after uh, Title IX had passed and things just started to change before the NCAA even was uh, overseeing women's sports. So thanks to all the Win Weigels of the world, right? The ones who and laid no the question. groundwork. No question. So many women who really laid the foundation for what these young ladies are able to enjoy today. Jolby Tobby already announcing her presence with authority. A couple of good plays on the defensive end. Graduate from uh, Paris. Finishing oh, out her slip. career. Yep, and that is terrific. Really good slip and execution by NC State. Hobby with the finish. Those are some of the things that you know, Westmore was talking about not having the opportunity to practice. You know that Miami's going to be aggressive. Where are your pressure releases? What is your timing on the backdoor cuts? Where are you going to find the slips out of screens, on hard hedges, rollbacks? Where's the X out coming from? All of those things that you get from watching hours and hours and hours of film. Hobby with the miss, but the rebound on the other side. Kayla Jones, who kind of is the jack of all trades for this team. And again, yeah, these teams did not find out until relatively late on Friday that the game had been switched. Second year in a row that Miami has had to play NC State on very short notice because of COVID protocols affecting opponents. And Katie Meyer told us that she has some packages specifically for NC State that she has been unable to put in now for two years in a row. <laughs> Just one practice. Just one practice, and you know, of years of competing against NC State and, and seeing you know Westmore's program continue to grow. Katie Meyer has things that she wants to use to give her team an advantage, and yes, on such short notice, not able to do that. Six nothing, NC State run has given them the lead. My Kia Gray, number five, giving it up to City Baba as the shot clock is really skinny. Marshall with the tough runner got it off in time, but it wouldn't go in. Reina Perez over on the sideline stepped out of bounds. Perez was a transfer, came in last year, taking advantage of the COVID year along with Kayla Jones and Kai Crutchfield. Team that was a number one seed last year, but got bounced in the Sweet 16 by Indiana. Players coming back, trying for better things this season. Good box out by Hobby, who's getting extended minutes now. We haven't seen Kunane in a while. I think Westmore likes what Camille Hobby is going to give him inside in terms of physicality, keeping Miami off the boards being a bigger body, stronger body inside. Kayla Jones backed away, allowing the shot by Dwyer. Another freshman who has gotten some quality minutes for Miami. Long rebound for Perez. Iman Johnson, number zero in black, just the dynamic Rutgers transfer has given them a whole nother dimension. And the outside shot 
hit by Perez. Well, Pam, you mentioned Diamond Johnson, and Diamond Johnson makes that play happen because she takes a one or two dribble bounce, draws a secondary defender, and allows NC State to move the basketball, get the extra pass, and a high percentage look. And that's what you have to do when you play a team that can recover as quickly as Miami. You have to force a commitment on the defensive end. And, and they Miami make the right pass. Missed, yeah, right. They've missed eight straight shots, however, as they have gone into a little bit of a funk after getting an early lead. And that's the challenge for this Miami ball club, consistency on the offensive end of the floor. You, know, you cannot go multiple possessions without getting a score, regardless of how good your defense is when you're playing a team like NC State. Yeah, because you know NC State's going to fill it up. They lead the ACC in scoring. Opportunity now on the break. Gray ends the drought with style. Katie Meyer talked to us about their ability to either score early in transition or then force multiple ball reversals and get high percentage looks on the backside against NC State. And Toby Toby just drew a charge. A really good positioning by Jaldi Tabdi. Diamond, if you're Diamond Johnson, you got to see that she tried to euro around it. That might be one of those situations where you shoot that pull up or you keep that dribble alive, go out the other side, and get back into offense. Diamond Johnson, their second leading scorer, got into foul trouble. Two quick fouls against North Carolina was not much of a factor at seven points later in the game. Picks up that personal foul. Another three. Miami hits again from the outside. It's Destiny Harden playing just her second game of the season. Had been out with a lower body injury. Missed the first ten games. And these are her first points of the year. Well, Katie Meyer talked to us about how important Destiny Harden would be. That position, that stretch four position, the ability to shoot the basketball, to be versatile and move her around the floor. And we can see right away she's making an impact. Averaged 11 points last year, was her leading rebounder, also led them with double doubles. Jones gets it off and it counts. Kayla Jones. Nailing the three at the buzzer. The officials will go over to verify. But Jones knocking it down. That's my Forsberg, assisted this afternoon by Ashley Gloss and Ryan Durham. This is good execution off of the screen and roll. You know there's going to be a hard show. You know there's going to be a rotation. Jones takes her time, uses the side dribble, but you can see the recovery going for the shot fake. Does she get it off? Oh, very close. <laughs> and perhaps also a, a question as to whether or not she was behind the three-point line as well. And she stayed after a slow start to that quarter. Ended well. We will tell you what the review re reveals when we come back. Welcome back to the University of Miami, where NC State has a one-point lead heading into the second quarter. Pam Ward and Steph White joining you. And Kayla Jones did indeed hit a three. The officials looked at it at the buzzer, said her feet were behind the line, and got it off before the clock expired. So State takes the one-point lead. Going into the second quarter, Elisa Cunane gets her first shot and her first points. Well, it's important for NC State to establish Cunane, and they were not able to do it early by getting her post touches in the half court. But when Miami does extend that pressure, if you can break through those traps and get rid of the ball, you'll get easy looks. Only played four minutes in the first half. Galdi Tobby can't score around Cunane. Camille Hobby came in and did a good job off the bench for State, but. We're talking about Cunane in the running for National Player of the Year coming off a 19.13 rebound performance against Carolina. And you see where she's getting the ball. I mean, Jaldi Tabi doing a great job of keeping her off the paint. She's almost at the second hash mark. Gets it over to Diamond Johnson. Skips off the rim. Rebound corralled by Destiny Harden. 
Arjevets decide to pull up rather than attack the paint. Harden, another good look. Well short on the three. Now Jada Boyd with a nice little ball, a fake, and then puts it in. And that's the thing with this NC State squad. They're so deep. They have so many options. You're right, so balanced. And you have Jada Boyd, who could be a starter coming off the bench, giving contributions. Diamond Johnson, who could be a starter coming off the bench, giving contributions. And each one can score from multiple areas of the floor. Boyd, the co-sixth player of the year in the league last year. Galdi Tobby puts up a three that's well short. But the rebound hunted down by Dwyer, Lachey Dwyer, the freshman from Toronto, with the effort in the bucket. And again, just the activity level for Miami on the offensive glass as well, continuing to, to stay active, stay aggressive, give, their, give themselves multiple opportunities to score the basketball. The last four games, Dwyer really coming alive offensively. A long three from Johnson. Rebound fought for, and Kunane, I believe, will be called for the foul. Nope, Brown Turner, excuse me. Kia yeah. Brown Turner picks up her first foul. She has yet to score. She's missed all three of her shots for the Wolfpack. JBT, as I call it, got off to a great start, didn't she, in that game against yeah. North Carolina. Pendande, that's adorable, came out uh, without taking off her shooting shirt. But uh, Turner, Brown Turner kind of cooled off towards the end of that game. Well, she has a tendency to sometimes just blend in, uh, and she has a tendency to, to, to stop being aggressive and to settle for jump shots, and if they're not there, be a tossback. She had five of her seven points in the first quarter, and I think NC State needs her to be aggressive to the rim for them to be successful. Wow, another move this time by the other freshman, Jalea Williams, able to slice into the paint. And Pam, when I'm talking about NC State being successful, I'm not talking about wins and losses. I'm talking about Final Fours, Get, getting right. to where they said they wanted to go when every one of these super seniors came back because they had unfinished business. And a team that has won back-to-back -back ACC tournaments. Got in, as we mentioned earlier, as the num as a number one seed last year in the Mercado division. Lost to Indiana by three points in the Sweet 16. And that's just not, you know, right now you're right. They're, they're thinking Final Four. They're thinking national championship contender. Yeah, and, and it's a process. And, you know, Wes Moore had talked to us before that North Carolina game about he, we haven't played our best basketball. They did play the best basketball they've played this season against North Carolina. But being able to build to March, being able to build for a championship, Final Four championship run, what does that mean? It means you don't peak in January, right? You continue to build your depth, build confidence, build chemistry, and peak in March. And he also said that he intends to shorten his rotation off the bench as things go along. Front clock at six. Wire just pulled right in there. Boyd drew the charge. <laughs> yeah, Boyd does so many of these little things that don't always show up in the stat sheets. Her experience, her IQ, her understanding. She gets position and she takes the contact. Junior from Petersburg, Virginia. And we had to play 19 minutes against North Carolina on Thursday. A convincing victory. They led 10-0. Never looked back. Led 24-7 after one quarter. And held North Carolina to its lowest offensive output of the season. Oh, my. Diamond Johnson. When you can bring someone like her off the bench. She's a playmaker. I mean, she, she is a combo guard. She is a scoring guard. She's a playmaker. She didn't have a lot of time or space to get that shot. She shot it with confidence. Played her freshman year at Rutgers. Williams stepped on the baseline. Diamond Johnson, all freshman last year in the Big Ten. Second team, all Big Ten overall. With averaged 18 points per game. And uh, Coach Moore says that she's accepted her role of being a sixth player. A lot of people have to accept roles on this NC State team. There's a lot of talent on the bench and not a lot of minutes. 
Boyd, nice work, but could not get the second rebound. Yeah, and Pam, you know, going going back to your point about accepting roles on this NC State team, you didn't know what to expect before the COVID year. So everyone gets an extra year. You've got players who are, have been recruited, who have signed with them, who are freshmen, who probably expected to, to get more minutes than they're going to get because of that. Transfers who came in, you know, expecting to get more minutes. But the ability for Westmore to, to manage all of that and the selflessness of each individual on a team is, is telling. And it's the difference between being successful and not. Marjovic with time running down. Can't quite get it. Kunain able to get it right off the rim. Yeah, a disgruntled bunch on the bench would not make for, uh, I mean, that, that could really hurt you no matter how good you are as a team. Kunain chased it down nicely. Way out on the perimeter. Hit three threes against Carolina, tying a career high, but gave it up to Johnson. Her floater, count it. City Baba called for the foul, defensive foul. Well, the official signal that she was in the restricted area, and it looks like that's right, heels on the line in the restricted area. I mean, it's a game of inches, right? You're a half an inch outside of that. That's an offensive foul. West Moore's team up six, timeout of Miami. Welcome back on Thursday. We have a doubleheader schedule. Virginia Tech Duke on the ACC Network, and Steph and I will have Florida State and Georgia Tech on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Florida State, a very impressive win against Wake Forest. Morgan Jones back in the lineup for the Seminoles, so they are trending upward. And we know what that defense of Georgia Tech can do. Meanwhile, let's recap this game. Speaking of defense, Miami shooting just 27% scoreless in the last minute and a half. Diamond Johnson with punch off the bench. As State leads it by six, Diamond Johnson completes the three-point play. NC State team that has only lost twice this year to South Carolina, the number one team in the country, and to Georgia in a thrilling overtime loss down in Raleigh last month. Oh, nice oh pass. that's pretty. What a great look inside. You have to be aware of a scorer on the floor in Marshall, and that was that pass was, as Doug Bruno always says, on time and on target. Yeah, it's the best kind. Georgia Toppy with a spectacular assist from Marshall. The lead her team in that category. There's another drawn charge. Shade Boyd called for the foul. You have to expect every time there's a timeout, every time there's a dead ball, whether the ball's on the sideline, on the inline, Miami's going to come at you with a trap. They're going to change their defense. They're going to force you into rushed offense, and that's exactly what they did. Tobby drawing Kunane out, misses the three. Boyd coming up with the rebound. NC State actually being out-rebounded today. One of the best rebounding teams in the country. Tops in the ACC in rebounding margin, but being out-rebounded so far this afternoon. Now this is what Miami does. They love to run. Dolby Tobby hanging out at that three-point line. Well, here's an example of what Katie Meyer talked to us about what she wanted offensively from her team. If we can't score early, then we have to get multiple ball reversals to get open shots. That shot didn't go in, but that was a good look. Yep. And then the block, Boyd able to get a hand on the shot. A really good defense inside by Boyd. Getting a hand on it. And if you're Westmore, you know, one of the things that Westmore was so pleased with his team about against North Carolina was their defensive energy and intensity. Urgency. He kept saying to a sense of urgency. They have not had that same activity level and sense of urgency on the defensive end here today. Ryan Johnson forces a turnover. 
Coach Moore said he was really on them. He said he almost felt badly because he was on them so much during practice leading up to the Carolina game about their defense. Nice turnaround from Kunane. And that was that good execution offensively, finding Kunane who had CD Baba on her down low and getting her a touch. Ball bounces in for Williams. Miami hanging in there. Hurricane uh, seven and four on the season. Pardon me. And, and Katie, you want to talk to us about the fact that we got to be able to score the basketball as Kayla Jones knocks down another three, getting in, a, getting back in a rhythm. I mean, it's really hard. They were off 25 days to find themselves yeah. in a rhythm offensively. It was going to be very difficult in that first game back against Wake. You can see they're starting to find it now. And yeah, they're starting to look like they're getting that rhythm back. You're right again, folks. 25 straight days without a game. This is just their second game in 28 days. I can't imagine the challenges for that coaching staff trying to. Billy Meyer said that you know they got individual work, which was good, but by the end of it, they were. I would imagine you get a little punchy. Oh yeah. man, this time finishing uh. with the right hand. Well, nice finishes for Elisa Kunane after a quiet start, has six points in this quarter. Oh, she was getting some touches inside and able to establish herself, get a little confidence, see it go through the bottom of the net. Welcome back, Elisa Kunane. Coming live, 33-26. Kunane in the first quarter only played four minutes. Uh, positioning seems to be a little bit better now in the second quarter. It is. She's getting two feet in the paint. They're getting her the ball on time where she can make something happen. You know, Miami in the first quarter did a really good job of forcing her way out off the block. Miami relying heavily on three-pointers. Perez, that's a big-time no-no, fouling the three-point shooter, Mykia Gray. Well, there's a tendency as a defensive player you know, to overcompensate, Miami's, you said it, relied on three-point shooters, but you have to be able to contest without fouling. And if the game plan is to go under the screen, but there's three feet between the screener and the ball handler, you still have to go over the top. You can't allow that much space. Men's basketball coming your way Wednesday night. It is Duke taking on Wake Forest. Duke losing to... Miami, the Miami man, right? It was a Florida State, one of those Florida schools. NC State Louisville <laughs> follows up at 9 Eastern time. That's all coming your way Wednesday on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Bottom line, the Duke men were upset. We've seen so many upsets this year, men's and women's basketball. I mean, it has been incredible. It's been fun to watch. It's been nice that you can't just rely on the usual suspects. Seeing the parody is a lot of fun. Yeah, it sure is. It's going to make the... Upcoming tournaments that much more fun. You see that time, Elisa Kunane got the ball off the block. And when that happens, it's like she's a toss back, but great movement without the basketball by Diamond Johnson. Uh, Diamond and, Johnson. And, and I'd like to see them move Kunane out a little bit more. We saw her in the trail position against North Carolina shooting the three point shot. Move her around, utilize her. She's a very good facilitator as well. And it was the Miami men who beat Duke by two yesterday at Cameron. So Miami trying to pull off an upset on the women's side. Jaldi Tomby has found a little home out there this afternoon. Missed her first three, nailed that one. Just her fourth of the year, now the turnover. Katie Meyer talked to us about we have to make shots in order to, to put our press on. Marshall had a little bit more time, threw that one up to end the half, but how about Miami as they are only down three after one half of play? Going to get you in the studio now, Drew Walker and Muffet McGraw. All right, thank you, Pam, here in Studio G. Drew Carter alongside the coach, Muffet McGraw, breaking down a very interesting first half in South Florida as Miami's hanging around with the number five team in the country, NC State. Coach, we were talking a little bit during that first half. What do you think Miami is doing to keep this game so close? 
They're doing it with defense. I think that the, the press they're putting on at half court is giving NC State a little bit of trouble. They didn't have a chance to practice against this. So this is something that Wes is probably trying to draw up on the sideline. How are we going to attack this press? They're not able to get easy shots. They're not able to get open looks. So they have to do a better job if with their passing. They're throwing too many blooper passes. They need to make a hard bounce pass, attack the rim, and get that two-on-one on the inside. Two people are double teaming. You have a four-on-three behind that double team. they got to get the ball out quickly and attack. So, Coach, we just heard you kind of break down how they can beat this press, but, you know, is, is it enough time in-game to do that, or is that something you have to practice? Do you think they can implement that in the second half? That's really difficult to do in the game, and, and certainly this is a smart veteran NC State team, but still, that's something that you really want to walk through at practice. You want to look at it. You have to make it happen because you can't just talk about it and you have to be able to go out and execute and tell them exactly what you're looking for. We're going to look on the backside. We're going to try to attack the free throw line and go high low or look on the three-point line. They have to have a plan. They've also got to get Elisa Kinane more involved. Only six points in that first half for the ACC preseason player of the year. Play nothing but net. It's always a good time. Thursday at 10. Come back on ACC Network for nothing but net. Breaking down everything happening across the ACC. Plenty more to break down from NC State and Miami and preview Virginia Tech and North Carolina. We'll do that next. Can Elisa Kinane and NC State get things going in the second in Coral Gables? We've got the answer next. Welcome back to Coral Gables at the half. NC State, only a three-point lead over Miami. The fifth-ranked Wolfpack have won their first four games in this conference by at least 27 points. Not so today against the Hurricanes. Pam Ward and Stephanie White joining you. And Miami has had some success, Steph, from the three-point line. Yeah, they've done an outstanding job of shooting the basketball. They only average six threes a game, already have five here in the first half. And Katie Meyer has to be pleased with how her team is moving the ball offensively, getting open looks, knocking them down. This is a team that struggled offensively against Wake, getting back to form after having those 25 days off. Looking good in the first half here today. Only scored 46 points in the loss to Wake Forest on Thursday. You take a look at the numbers. Miami shooting better from three than they are from two, but not taking advantage of the offensive rebounds. 11 of them, but they've only converted that into two points. Yeah, and then that's got to be a, a concern for Katie Meyer, having opportunities that you are unable to convert on, particularly you're playing a top five team in the country. NC State can continue to come at you on the offensive end of the floor. Missing easy opportunities or not taking advantage of opportunities could come back to hurt you. Now, Lisa Kinane did not even take a shot in the first quarter. Had six points in the second quarter. Diamond Johnson off the bench. And both of these players, right? Jalea Williams actually getting the start today for Miami. But Johnson with some punch off the bench with eight along with Kayla Jones to lead the way for the NC State Wolfpack who are trying to stay atop the ACC standings after an impressive win against North Carolina on Thursday. And let's see how they respond. Only up three at the half. Four well, lead sure changes in that first half. And I'm sure Wes Moore talked to his team at halftime about their energy level, their urgency level, what he had been talking to us about all week leading up to North Carolina. Yeah, their defense was outstanding in that win against North Carolina. And North Carolina held to their season low in points, field goal percentage. Their first loss of the season for the Tar Heels, who will play Virginia Tech later today. That is going to be a really interesting game. That's going to be a great game. We're looking forward to that. How can North Carolina bounce back after that loss at NC State? And Virginia Tech's on a roll, three wins. Lisa Kinane was just called for her first foul for the Wolfpack. Kinane coming off another double-double against Carolina. Man, you see how NC State is playing off of Miami at the three-point line, giving them, giving them a cushion. Sometimes it's really difficult for players when you're playing scout defense and you're not all up on somebody pressuring because look at how flat-footed standing up not active they are on the defensive end of the floor and that is a challenge at times for teams as we see marshall continue to stay hot yeah that's a good point there is uh that, and that's crutchfield he's one of the best defenders in the 
cunt in the conference, at least, if not the country, if Miami blows a chance to score after a steal. Yeah, I, I think it's it's really just a challenge sometimes for, for players to understand that just because we're playing off from a strategic standpoint in scout, it doesn't mean that our intensity level isn't the same. It doesn't mean that our activity level with our hands and our feet isn't the same. We can still be in a defensive stance at all times. Playing off does not mean playing soft. And at times that's a challenge in scout defense. Kia Brown-Turner, number 11 in black. How about no points for her staff? Just took three shots in that first half. A great year last year for Jakia. Unanimous first team all-conference, but her numbers are down this season. Her numbers are down, and, and you know, we, we'd like to see her, from, from our standpoint, be more aggressive. And Westmore talked about that, too. You don't have to concede by just being passive. Somebody's up on you, running off the three-point line. Holy cow, the tip-in. What an awesome play by Mbandu. This is the first time Miami has led since they were up 15 to 13 in the first quarter, but Kayla Jones takes the lead right back. Kayla Jones always has an answer. It might not be scoring the basketball as it was right there, but it's making a big play getting a defensive stop, getting a rebound. That's her experience, her IQ, her steadiness. Such an important component. Had knee surgery back in April and is uh, still working her way back. Sat against Clemson before the Carolina game to get some rest. But you're right, always seems to come up with a big play. She is one of those super seniors who decided to come back. And Bondu and Kunane mixing it up a little bit in the paint. I think they're going to get. Excuse me, that's Pendande who was mixing up with Kunane. And Lola is called for her first foul. Uh, Pendande has not scored either. Only about seven and a half points per game, but an important component for this Miami team. Yeah, Pendande's motor. I mean, she is aggressive on the offensive glass. She runs the floor, plays at a high energy level. Rutchfield getting her third basket of the season. Got four points in the first quarter off to a quick start. Stands and the lead back to four. And NC State changing it up the last two possessions, going with a 2-3 zone defense. Marshall, who earlier in this game set the Miami all-time record for career threes, hits another one. It's amazing how free you can play once something like that's kind of off your back. You know, really struggled the last couple of games leading into breaking the record. Broke it the first shot of the day, or first three of the day, and now she's playing free. Brown Turner was playing pretty good defense on her, put it up, and went in. Miami now down by one. Kunane. Got it. He's going to get a chance to go to the free throw line. And that's the difference. Where is Elisa Kune getting the ball? So that time she gets it below that first hash mark, above the block, and she's able to utilize that fadeaway. When she's catching it up near the free throw line or out 10 feet away from the rim, she's not able to do that. It makes her life much more difficult. Only the second free throw attempt of the game for NC State. Second in the league in free throw percentage. Kunane over 80% on the season. Completes the three-point play to extend the lead back to four. Arievitz goes to her left. Nice cutoff by Jones. Obi Tobby, she's been feeling it on the offensive end tonight. Yeah, she's been shooting and playing in the face-up game most of the afternoon, shooting it with confidence. Coming in off the bench, has seven points, playing some good defense on Kunane. A little bit too physical that time. But Pam, that has to be the game plan, to be physical with Elisa Kunane. To, to really, you know, use your size and length, but also use your body and get her off the paint. Shrink the floor. 
it challenges the spacing of NC State as well. What a move by Kunane. So Dovi Tobi picking up her first foul in the previous play, and that was a sweet move. A reverse for Elisa Kunane. Using her mobility against the physicality of Zaldi Tobi inside. 11 points for Elisa all. Coming since the first quarter, and now State starting to get a little bit of breathing room. Genesis, Genesis Bryant in the game. Check that, that was Crutchfield. Maybe probably a little bit of a cushion. Good defense by Humane to go over there. No foul call. They got a good time out here. Good Katie Meyer. Yeah, absolutely. They've made six straight shots. Kunane getting Mithy under the bucket again. Well, I love the way Elisa Kunane is playing right now. Much more aggressive. Outstanding job of utilizing her speed and versatility to start to pull away. Elisa Kunane has established herself in this ball game after not scoring in the first quarter and utilizing her skill set, her versatility, her ability to play off the bounce, her speed and athleticism to go around the physicality of Miami Bigs inside and really important every game for NC State to establish her and you can see the difference first, second and third quarter making it a point of emphasis to get her some touches. And not only did she not score in the first quarter, she didn't even take a shot, only played four minutes. And then uh, came out of the game, Camille Hobby came in and uh, was a little bit more physical, but Kunane coming off a terrific double-double against North Carolina in which she had three threes. Well, the top be able to get inside as they beat the pressure. I guess Moore was talking to us yesterday about trying to get the consistency from Elisa Kunane, get that kind of result night after night. Because they certainly look like the national championship contender in that win against North Carolina, especially with the way Kunane played, the way their defense played. Their offense slacked off a bit towards the end, but they built a huge lead. Kunane with the block of Gray. You're right, Pam, and a lot of that's a mentality for Elisa Kunane, really asserting herself, being aggressive, dominant inside. Time out of Miami. We'll be back with more Elisa Kunane. Every Thursday at 10 Eastern Time, right after women's basketball doubleheader on the ACC Network, it's the Nothing But Net crew. There you see them. They'll break down every game and take a look ahead at the best games to come on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. So you can watch anywhere. Muffet McGraw in the studio today. She's got a lot of, I know you have trophies behind your kiddo, but Muffet's got a lot of stuff <laughs> in her home studio. Nothing compared to that. <laughs> She's got some hardware. She's got some memories. Oh, no question about it. No question about it. What Muffin McGraw has done at Notre Dame is just remarkable. Oh, that is exactly what they needed, right, Steph? Because it was getting kind of this kind of sketchy time for Miami, and they needed that three and got it. And that's exactly what they needed. You gotta, you have to find an answer. And good execution, really good execution out of a timeout by Miami. And it's Harden's second three of the game. Again, Destiny Harden only playing her second game of the year. Good defense, but Marshall tried to force it. A blocking foul called against Brown Turner. Marshall a little bit fortunate there, going one on three. I'm attacking in transition. I'm trying to get an opportunity to get a score early in transition. And Creates a foul on Brown Turner. Should have thrown that up there. Try to get a shooting foul. Right. Boyd coming back in. Toby Toby fouled by Kunane on the catch. 
second for Elisa. Well, the top be one of three French citizens on this Miami team. We have players from six different countries. And between them, 12 different languages. You could say a lot of things about your coach and she wouldn't know what you're saying, right? <laughs> that is true. Very good point. Brown Turner has not scored today. Gets it up to Johnson. And then she gave the ball up to Miami. They have numbers four on two. Williams couldn't get it to go. And then the foul on the Canes. I think that was hard coming in for that offensive rebound, running right into Jakia Brown Turner. NC State really fortunate there, though. In turnovers for scores. You know, Westmore talked about that being a concern of his, and Miami does turn you over, and that is how they get themselves going. Miami just eight points off of turnovers. That's too tall for Cunane, who is 6'5". And that's a long pass against a team that gets in the passing lanes and is so aggressive, you know, as Miami. And we've seen NC State a little bit sloppy with the basketball, but some soft passes, soft high arcing passes too. And there's going to be a time where Miami picks that off and gets an easy bucket. Ten turnovers now for, Miami, for uh, NC State, including three in a row. Uh, you could hear from the other end of the gym all the NC State people on the bench yelling walk, and that's exactly <laughs> what they got Pendande for. Pendande has not scored. Neither has Carla Aryevitz or Naomi Mbondu. So three starters have not scored for the Canes this afternoon. Still, they're only down three. Well, this is an important possession for NC State. After three turnovers in a row, really need good execution. Give yourself an opportunity to score the basketball. And it's Jakia Brown-Turner, her first points of the game. And the answer is Kelsey Marshall. I know the first thing on the scout re scouting report about Kelsey Marshall is to run her, crowd her on the three-point line. No open looks. She has had too much time and space. And that is her specialty. If you're just joining us, she broke a Quanah Williams career mark for threes early in this game and has added a couple of more. Johnson getting it over. Boyd. Marshall got a hand on it, but nobody got to Cunane. Well, I felt like they missed Elisa Cunane when the ball went back to the corner to Boyd. They missed an opportunity to get her a touch, and she went after it and got it herself. Gotta like that aggression. Cunane, seven of eight from the floor. 15 points. Trying to thread the needle to Pendande, but Brown Turner came away with it. That's the right idea. It's just tough to pass that to a big on a bounce pass off the move with guards that are coming down in that 2-3 zone. And Throw Marshall, it up high. Let her go get it. Right. Yeah, I've heard that bounce passes are difficult for tall players. Generally speaking, true. Because if someone yeah, who's it, not it, tall, I, I cannot <laughs> relate. It's, it's one of those things that it depends on where you are on the floor and how you've gotten a rotation, but against the zone in that particular horns action or horn set, giving it to her going to the rim against a smaller wing defender, you got to get it up. Let her go get it. Yeah. Boyd at the line after getting fouled by Marshall. Gets them both. Mary Vitz, number 25 in white, coming in for the Canes. Mentioned that she has not scored. She's their second leading scorer on this team. Only Kelsey Marshall averages double figures for Miami this season. And Miami can all but kill the entire game clock with his possession. Be patient. You don't have to go right away. You want to make sure you get the last shot. And I like the adjustment by NC State to go in zone. 
Wow, what a <laughs> tough shot, Mikea Gray. And Gray hitting that shot to end the third quarter. The Canes only down five. Really good execution. You got the screen and roll anyway. That's a tough, strong finish between two players. Welcome back as we take a look at our Food Lion food for thought. Heading to the fourth quarter, this Wolfpack shooting very well, particularly in that quarter, but still only up five. Kunain and Marshall doing most of the offensive work for their respective teams. Well, I've just been impressed with how Miami's been able to answer, you know, every, ba every basket, every run. Miami 8 for 20 from the three-point line. NC State 6 for 14. We're talking about an NC State team that is number one in the league in three-point field goal percentage, is second in three-point field goal makes at almost nine a ball game. The defensive effort, intensity, activity level by Miami is really disruptive. And that's Steph White. I'm Pam Ward joining you in Coral Gables. This was supposed to be, well, not this game. Miami was supposed to host Louisville. NC State's supposed to be at Notre Dame, but on Friday, Louisville and Notre Dame were put into protocol. Thus, this game, and Camille Hobby, that is not easy. And she got it done. Hobby starting the fourth quarter to get Cunan a little extra rest. Westmore speaks so highly of Camille Hobby and just you know her ability to come in and give them a different dynamic than Elisa Cunane does inside. She doesn't get as many minutes as he would like to give her because of Cunane, but when she comes in, she always makes a difference. Averaging about 13 minutes per game, completing a three-point play. She's got seven points. Coach's kid, her dad, Marion, is the defensive line coach for the Bengals, who are having a tremendous season. But yeah, Hobby's just one of those glue kids, and, and what a luxury to bring her in to spell Tunane, give him a little bit more physicality, too, at the post. And again, Pam, to your point, another one of those players who is, is playing a role in, in a team that has Final Four aspirations and has accepted that role. And Hobby just blocked Pendande's shot. Marshall had to get it up in a hurry. It hit nothing but the... Bottom of the net in a bad way. Didn't go in. Here's <laughs> Diamond Johnson, number zero. NC State trying to stay perfect in the ACC. Boyd with the miss. Pendande comes up with it. This is the first non blowout that NC State has played in the conference this season. Two straight air balls now for Miami. And here's the pressure from the Hurricanes. And you can see the, the adjustment again by NC State, a guard inbounding the basketball so you can get it back to him if need be. But Miami able to force another turnover. Marina Perez, that's unusual for her. Two to one assist to turnover ratio on the season. Miami hanging around. They are out rebounding NC State by eight. Miami has not lost a game in which they have out-rebounded an opponent this season. City Baba trying to split the defense and got fouled. Katie Meyer talked to us about her team and not wanting them to settle for just the first pull-up jumper that they can get. She said NC State wants to lull you into that early in the shot clock, and her team has been very disciplined on the offensive end of the floor, getting the looks that they want. Elena City Baba, a junior from Arsta, Sweden. Known more for her defense and her offensive output has spent some time on Swedish national teams. Gets a pair. Miami now with 27 bench points. Down six as we hit eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Johnson in and out. 
Yeah, you look. see what this pressure does. If, if it doesn't turn you over, it forces you into those quick shots, those quick rush shots that are highly contested. Maeva Zalbi Tabi only had three threes on the season coming in. Gets another one. Well, she hasn't been shooting it like she's only made three threes on the season. She has stretched the defense. She has let it fly from the three-point line, and she has played with confidence on the offensive end of the floor. That's a lead in half, and on the drive, Marshall whistled for a foul. Jody Tabi has been really good for Miami all day long on both ends of the floor. You see the pick and pop, steps up, knocks it down. Turner, the lefty at the line after getting fouled by Marshall. She just took her ninth free throw of the <laughs> season. Yeah. Well, that yeah, tells us that she's not being aggressive with the ball on offense. You're right. And, and with her her build, with her length, with her athleticism, and she, she can be a slasher and aggressor to the rim. And if she would do that more often, it would loosen up defenders on her and then allow her to do what she's most comfortable with, and that's shoot the three. Now we're running fade screens for her. <laughs> the bench was getting ready to explode. And Had that, that going in. <laughs> that went in and out, Pam. That was almost all the way in. Brown Turner now Mar defended. Yep. And Kate Murray talked to us about we're going to feed the hot hand. Whoever is the hot hand, that's who we're going to give the ball to. Marina Perez, her second from long distance. And taken away, Diamond Johnson leads this team in steals and goes coast to coast. They can just come at you really quickly. And Reyna Perez knocks down a big three, and then Diamond Johnson gets the steal and the, and the conversion. That's why it's so important when you're playing NC State, you have to be able to score with them, and Miami has been able to do that to this point. The challenge is can they finish the game that way? And Jaldi Tobby was open for a couple of seconds after Hobby went down, was yelling for the ball. They finally got it to her, and Hobby fouled her. First on Camille Hobby, just the second team foul. Kibaba. Took a couple of steps in and missed. wonder how long Westmore is going to keep Elisa Cunane on the bench. You know, he talked to us about losing track of her minutes against Clemson when he had zero assistant coaches on the right. bench with him, everyone in COVID protocols. But I would imagine he'll want to get her back in the ballgame pretty soon. Bobby Tobby fouling Hobby after a nifty move. Yep, that was the, the Clemson game in which Elisa only played 14 minutes. Engaged on the bench for this NC State team. Arjevitz back in for Miami. He was 0 for 3 on the day. Bench players coming up big for Katie Meyer to keep this in, keep them in this game so far. In danger right now of it slipping away. Here comes Kunan. Seven nothing NC State run has given them their biggest lead and Elisa back in the game. 15 points, just four rebounds. Had her third double double of the season in their last game against North Carolina. Freshman. 
And again, the execution by Miami really being intentional about running that elbow on ball screen action and, and getting a 15 foot jump shot instead of a 19 foot jump shot. Brown Turner, a little bit too strong on the three. Kunain and Mbondu get mixed up a little bit. So NC State with a nice run, leading it by eight, timeout. <laughs> ACC Network Basketball is presented by Food Lion, the official grocer of the ACC. Some of the fans in attendance here in Coral Gables. Miami has played well, but right now they're facing an eight-point deficit with just under five minutes left to go. Lisa Kumain and company trying to stay unbeaten in the ACC this year. And State is in the bonus for the rest of the half because the next team foul for Miami will be their fifth. So... Uphill battle for the Hurricanes, who have had trouble this year scoring in the fourth quarter, averaging only about 14 points in the fourth quarter. They have half that so far, halfway through this one. Boyd got tangled up. That's the Canes basketball. There's that little freshman again, Jalea Williams. Coach Meyer talked to us about Williams. Was it early? She said she was facing off against Kelsey Marshall, who's a grad student, and just wouldn't back down. She said she liked that about Marshall and Dwyer, her other freshmen. They got a little stuff in them and very competitive. And love that they can get up in you on the defensive end of the floor. Because of their activity level and aggressiveness can make up for so many mistakes. And, and just by playing hard and playing with multiple levels of effort. In the last few games, they have really been instrumental on offense. Arievitz just can't get anything going on the offensive end. Marshall gets the Daldi Tobby screen. And then lost it. Diamond Johnson again getting a hand in there. He has been such a key component to this already really good NC State team. Two seconds to shoot. When Miami likes to go to this 1-3-1 one, one on the sideline out of bounds and throw a different look, those long lofty passes are dangerous. No Jones giving it up to Johnson who took steps trying to get around area bets. And again, just keep the, the changes in the defense, the aggressiveness in the defense, the traps coming at you sometimes and not other times. It just keeps you off balance and NC State's offense is so much about rhythm and timing and spacing, and Miami just disrupts that. 13 turnovers, which is around the average for NC State this season. Hard, and that's a toughie over Kunain. Long rebound. But Daldi Tobby could not handle it after Williams was able to draw the defense. Maeva, Daldi Tobby was questioning that call. Looks like the officials have gotten together and reversed it. And this is a really good look and a good job of Diamond Johnson getting a hand on it. I couldn't tell whose leg it went out on. My Forsberg, the veteran official. Working with Ashley Gloss and Ryan Durham this afternoon. Marshall with the miss. It's NC State basketball. Elsie Marshall, one of three Hurricanes in double figures this afternoon. 15 points with three threes. And Kunain heads to the free throw line after being fouled. 
Second on Dolby Toppy. ACC Network has a women's college basketball doubleheader for you on Thursday. Virginia Tech and Duke at 6 Eastern time. And then we will have we hope, Florida State, Georgia Tech following that up at 8 Eastern. Florida State with a big win. First time they have played in the new year because of all of the COVID issues going on around the country. So that's on the ACC Network and the ESPN app on Thursday. And Florida State and finally looking again. like what we expected Florida State to look like. Yes. We've had people in and out of the lineup looking good today against Wake Forest. Miami has only scored once in over five minutes of play. The worst time to have a drought. And that drought ends with Hart. Four minutes. This is that's Sorry, been the ahead. challenge for this Miami yeah. team, right? That's been the challenge is these scoring droughts. Where does it come from? How can you get it consistently? Their defense will keep them in ball games. You have enough firepower and consistency offensively to finish them. A little bit of a field goal throughout themselves. Kunane can't convert inside two minutes. Marshall trying to go all the way in. That was off the foot of Perez, so it stays with the Canes with 25 seconds to shoot. And if you're Miami, you, you, you need to get a look here. You, you need to, to put the ball in the hole. You need to get a score, really good execution at out of bounds underneath. Give yourself a chance right here. Bobby Tobby, another three, rims out. I felt like Marshall passed up a mid-range yeah. pull-up opportunity right there. Now the pressure, good job by Perez to get it up to Johnson. He challenges! Dolby Tobby gets it and gets fouled. What a play by Diamond Johnson. Just a little look off, like she was going to drop it off to Kunane right here. The in and out, able to finish with a little bit of contact. Johnson. Another double-digit scoring game for the Rutgers transfer. And that might have just salted it away for the pack. Number five in the country got their 400th ACC win against Carolina on Thursday. By far their toughest test in the conference so far. Their smallest margin of victory had been 27 points in their first four conference games. And Miami putting up quite a fight today, but it looks like not quite enough. Again, just nine points in this fourth quarter for the Canes. And at Fort Miami, you have to feel better if you're Katie Meyer about what you've seen offensively. Now it's just the consistency. Again, your defense is going to give you a chance night in and night out. And the way that they can pressure you, how quickly they can turn you over. You know, they're, they're not really ever out of a ball game. But West Moore and NC State coming off of such a big emotional rivalry win have been pretty flat today. Now they've made enough plays. They've made enough plays to put themselves in position right now to win a ball game. But overall have been pretty flat. And, and again, that has been West Moore's concern. Their sense of lack of sense of urgency, particularly on the defensive end. Harden. Robbie Toppy, nice rebound. Challenges to Nane who blocked it. Miami with so many chances, finally they draw a foul. Miami team not, not quitting, they've been hitting the glass hard. In fact, how about 20 offensive rebounds for Miami? But they've only turned that in, them into seven second chance points. Here's Harden at the line. We remind you every Thursday at 10 Eastern time, Right after our women's basketball doubleheader of the week, our Nothing But Net crew joins you to not only break down the night in the ACC, but to look ahead at the best games coming up. Insight you can only get on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Wow, Harden missed them both. And Pam, this was a three-point game with seven minutes left in this quarter. A three-point ball game, and 
NC State has been able to, to find ways to put the ball in the, in the hole, and Miami has not. Simple as that, and Diamond Johnson all but ends it with her three. Miami just four points since it was a three-point game. Driving score for Marshall. Miami's going to fall to 0-2 in the ACC. But an impressive performance. I think some people are going to look at the score and be surprised at how close it was. Some things to build on. Kunain finishes a nice pass from Johnson. I mean, this is a Miami team that played Indiana to two points. That played Maryland to single digits. It had 25-day layoff before playing again and, and trying to find their rhythm again. And an NC State team that might not have been pretty, but finding a way to win on the road in conference play is big, and it's always important. NC State goes to 14-2 and two on the season. Again, their only losses to number one South Carolina and then to Georgia in overtime. They take it 76-64. to 64. NC State... Next scheduled to play at Virginia and then a home stretch with Duke, Louisville, and Virginia Tech in order for West Moore. As they win it, 19 points for Alyssa Cunane to lead the way for Steph White on Pam Ward here now. Drew Carter and Muffet McGraw in the studio. Here to break down NC State and Miami, Drew Carter here in Studio G with the coach, Muffet McGraw. And, you know, coach, they were talking about it on the podcast a little bit closer than we anticipated in a game that we didn't know was on the schedule until two days ago. <laughs> this is a really good Miami team. They played Indiana to a very tight game, single digits. They played Maryland to a very tight game. They're in the games. That 25-day layoff clearly has hurt their offense a little bit. They need a little more firepower. Uh, I thought NC State showed their poise down the stretch and took care of business in the end when they had to. And Coach Elisa Kunain only took three shots in the first half and six points. She ends up with 19 points on 8 of 10 shooting. What did she do in the second half to get more involved? Well, and what did the team do, right? They got her the ball. I thought she did a much better job of getting better position. I thought she did a little bit of work on the offensive glass, but she needs to be more involved in the offense. She needs to get herself in good position, get a little deeper down the paint. She's coming outside the lane too much. They really don't want to get her the ball there. So I think she could do a little more work, but I think the team could look for her a little bit more. All right, so Elisa Kunain with a great game to lead NC State to another victory. The announcer has caught up with her post game. Joined now by Elisa Kunain, who had 19 points in a 76-64 win over Miami. Elisa, for you, a little tough going there. You didn't even take a shot in that first quarter. Uh, came on strong in the last three, but what was going on early for you? Uh, you know, I just had to be strong with the ball. Um, I fumbled a couple of times in the post, so I just had to trust myself and be smarter in the second quarter and beyond. Well, Elisa, you come off of a, a convincing win against North Carolina on the road against a tough Miami team. Uh, had a little trouble get, getting going offensively. Um, what was the difference for your team here today? Uh, I didn't think we'd come out with as much energy as we did uh, when we were at home last game. I think it was kind of tough for us to come here. You know, we were supposed to go to Notre Dame, and then we come here. So I don't think we were 100% focused at the beginning of the game. Yeah, well, how tough is that as a player when, when you have your mindset on, on the next opponent being one team and then you have to pivot and go to another team? How tough is that on you guys? Uh, it was pretty tough. Um, just like the COVID era, you never know who you're going to play, if you're going to play. But honestly, I'm just glad we were able to get down here and get a game in. All right, Elisa Kunay, thank you very much. Another big win for the Wolfpack. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Elisa Kunain and NC State survive at Miami, but coach, we heard her talking a little bit there at the end about what a challenge it is to play when you learn your opponent on a Friday and you play the game on a Sunday. I know you thought in the first half that Miami kind of took advantage of that, right? They really did. You know, Notre Dame, a ranked team, Miami coming off a 47 to 46 loss. So I, I think kids are looking at the stats. They're looking at the game thinking we're going to win that game. We're supposed to win that game. The, the atmosphere is, is not as electric as maybe it would have been for a, a matchup in the top 20. So I, I think Elisa was right. Very honest, came out with not a lot of energy, uh, but they got the job done. They win and 
Fresh off that huge 27-point romp of North Carolina, no letdown for NC State, they win at Miami.